the DSLR video shooter, we're going to be doing cine mods on stills lenses. Stills lenses are great. They offer an incredibly affordable way to get some glass on your camera without having to spend your arm and a leg or rent uh, cinema glass. Now, there is a big disconnect between the photography world when it comes to lenses and the cinema world when it comes to lenses. The biggest one being just operation and functionality. So uh, if you pick up a CP2 Zeiss Cine lens uh, or Cine Prime, you're going to notice a couple things. One, across their entire Prime set, the outer diameter is exactly the same. So the front ring on the lens matches all the other ones. This is great because you can grab a matte box and just slap it straight on the lens. You don't have to worry about adapting rings and all that crap. That's a big difference is the uh, outer diameter of the lens for adding filters and matte boxes and all that stuff. The next thing is obviously going to be lens gears. Um, lens gears are built into the lens and not only are they built into the lens, but they all have the same diameter. So if I took a CP2 prime, put it on my lens, butted up my follow focus to it, and then wanted to switch lenses, the gear ring on that lens is going to match all the other lenses. So a 50 will have the same diameter gear ring as an 85 or a 28 or really anything. So um, that's another big difference is not only having the lens gears, but having them the same size. The next thing is having a smooth aperture ring. If you grab one of those CP2s, you're gonna be able to smoothly, gloriously adjust your aperture without those nasty clicks that stills lenses have. So those are the really the big differences between stills lenses and cine lenses. And we're going to actually today talk about how to get your stills lenses as close as you can to cinema lens glass. So I've broken this down into steps. The first thing is obviously to take whatever lens you have and adapt it to your camera. I really recommend going with manual glass, especially when it comes to this cinema modifications, because you really can't um, do anything on the aperture when it comes to a lens like this. This is a Canon 100 millimeter lens. I can't do anything with that aperture ring because it's all internal and motorized. Whereas these guys I've got here, three Olympus OM lenses, these all have manual aperture so I can adjust those. So um, once you get it adapted here, I have a Photo Deox lens adapter. You can get these really cheap. This one is probably in the middle. Um, obviously if you can spend more money on these, and the reason for that is if you get a really cheap one, it'll kind of be loose and clinky. And what'll happen is, you know, if this is, this is a pretty heavy lens, so is this giant one over here. If it's sitting on your camera with all that weight all resting on the adapter, it's going to kind of sag, which is gonna screw with your sharpness and focus and things. So spending a little more money on the adapter is important. These three lenses all have Canon mounts, so I can quickly swap them uh, on and off the camera. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. The next thing is to de-click the aperture. Every lens is a little different. You can find a lot of tutorials on how to do this online. I have done a tutorial on these lenses and how to de-click them, uh, but it's really nice. As you can see here on this lens, uh, I can rotate the uh, aperture ring here, and it's really smooth, and this is gonna allow me to change the exposure very easily, and I, I really like this. I can't tell you how nice it's been to have these three lenses de-clicked. Um, it's so nice just to, you know, if you just needed a hair lighter, darker, just whoop, just twist it a little bit and you're good to go. So that's the next thing. I have separate videos on how to de-click these lenses, so definitely check those out. And then the next thing is going to be adding your lens gear. So there's lots of options for this. Um, recently, I've been using this guy right here. It's a Cinevate, and it has some pros and cons. The pro is that they're all the same. So these three lenses all have Cinevate lens gears. And you can see here, they're all the same diameter. The other thing I really like is, uh, unfortunately, on these manual lenses, especially these zoom lenses, uh, if I rotate this here, you'll notice that the focus ring is actually gonna move forward and back. So if I turn this here, it's starting to move forward, and then it goes back. That's a big problem because a lot of gears out there are really skinny. And the problem is going to be as I turn my follow focus, 
this uh, lens ring is gonna jump off of the gear on the follow focus because it's so skinny. So these beautiful big honk and Cinevate ones are really wide as you can see here. So on this lens, I can not only focus it without it running out of you know, range, but I can even zoom it and uh, I can still have the follow focus work. So that's really nice and a great feature, especially for these old manual lenses. Um, not all of them are like that, but these two zooms, I have that issue. Uh, this 50 millimeter prime has done great. The other good thing I love about these Cinevate ones is if you look at other options, uh, they're flexible. Like this one is a rubbery, flexible um, lens gear. Gets the job done in a pinch. And then uh, we have another one here. This is one of the zip ties. So you actually zip tie this to your lens. Uh, the issue with that is the actual pitch of the gear um, changes just a little bit depending on how big or small your lens is because you're flexing it. Whereas these guys from Cinevate are rock solid. They're not gonna change at all. And they work like butter with a uh, follow focus. This is a 0.8 pitch follow focus. Beautiful, beautiful combination between the follow focus and these. So, you know, that works great and they're incredibly well made. And the other thing is you can use it with multiple lenses. It takes some time because you have to put these spokes in. Um, but once you actually get it all lined up, it's great and it's, you just leave it on the lens and you're good to go. The con is this thing is huge. They have two sizes. This is actually the smaller of the two sizes. And um, the reason they have it this big is so it can accommodate several different lens types. But it is a little bulky, so setting this you know, in bags, I have a bunch of Porter Brace bags. These are really tight in there, so it's you know, a little bulkier and fitting in a Pelican case isn't gonna be as easy as a different option. So you know, that's something to consider. The last thing I really liked about them was that you can really get creative with how you position them. Uh, if you look here, the spokes are on the outside on one side. So on this lens, uh, I didn't wanna position it. If I had it the other way around, the gear would actually be over you know, the front of the lens, whereas this way I can move it back a little bit. Whereas on this lens, I have the opposite problem. Uh, if I put it on the back side, this is the small 50 prime. If I put this on the back side, it would cover up and bump into the actual camera. So this way I could move it forward and uh, it still doesn't interfere with my map box. Um, and I know I talked about not really liking how big these are, but that is actually also a pro. For instance, this is a tiny 50 millimeter lens. Look at this thing, it's, you know, tiny, tiny. This is a, uh, uh, 40 millimeter Canon Prime, and it's actually bigger when it comes to the diameter than this tiny lens. So what's really cool is I can, with this gear, because it's so big, I can throw it on my camera here. Let's just put the Canon aside, throw a cap on it, grab the 5D. I'm just gonna slap this lens on there. I can stick this on here and uh, take the cap off, grab my matte box, stick that on there, tighten it down, and get a load of this. Pull this up here. I can have this tiny, tiny little lens. That's how big it is. It's sitting in there, and I can still adjust my focus and have a giant matte box on here without any issues, that's really cool. So that's a huge pro is having this thing big enough for those tiny, tiny lenses. Your follow focus is gonna butt up nicely to this and uh, it also just lets you focus by hand much easier than without this. If I didn't have this, I'd have to get my hand in, onto this tiny, tiny little lens. The next thing I wanna talk about is adapting the front of your lens to a common outer diameter size. So when we look at cinema lenses, there's really two very popular ones. There's the 114 millimeter, those are the you know, Zeiss CP2s, those kinds of lenses, the Canon Cine Primes. Um, those are the big ones, really, really big. The other size that's very popular is 80 millimeter. So those are the smaller uh, cinema lenses and that is a lot more appropriate to adapt to when it comes to the photo lenses. The problem is photo lens filter sizes kind of jump around um, and don't match. So if you look at photo sizes, we're looking at you know the popular 67, 72, 77, and 82. So we have 77 and 82, but they don't get 80. You'd be amazed at how difficult it is to find a 77 to 80 millimeter adapter. Uh, there's really only two places that make them. So 
uh, we're gonna talk about one of them, one of the more affordable ones, and that's these really nice ones from Cordvision. Um, you can get various sizes. I recommend just getting the 77 to 80 millimeter, and then you can use step up rings to adapt them. So these are very affordable when you look at, I mean, they seem kind of expensive uh, when you compare it to other step up rings, but they're very important because they give you uh, this nice wide area in the front and that's gonna let you uh, add your map box and clamp right on. So that's the beauty of this, is we're getting all of our lenses the same size, and then we can take something like this map box, and you'll notice here, if I loosen up this guy right here, we can just take our lens or this adapter, and it just pops right in, we tighten it down, boom. We have our map box on our camera and on our lens, ready to rock and roll. The alternative really sucks. The alternative is buying adapters for the matte box for every single lens and they're all awkward different sizes you can't really get caps for them but if you get something like this this is the genus uh, matte box which i reviewed before you can get an 80 millimeter adapter clamp on ring and this is beautiful because then all of your lenses just slide right in you tighten it down and you're gold so that's really cool so those ones are from cord vision i really recommend them the other ones are from uh, do close the guys that do cine mods for lenses those are a lot more expensive, uh, but that's also an option if you want a super high quality version. The other thing that's gorgeous and beautiful about these things is that they actually still have a 77 um, filter thread on the inside. So you can still use you know, your round filters if you don't wanna use a matte box or if you kind of have a bunch of filters already. So this is cool because you can go straight onto a lens. So as an example, I have this tiny uh, 40 millimeter prime from Canon. I can take a step up ring. This is a 52 to 77. And I can just screw that right onto the lens. 77 to 80 millimeter. Thread that on like so. Obviously we want to uh, add a uh, ring, a lens gear to this guy because that's really difficult to access. And now this whole thing We'll just attach directly to the matte box and now we have a lens that's ready to rock and roll with your matte box. The next thing that I like to do to kind of further modify this is to add a, a magnetic filter adapter. And this is really cool. They're from Exum and you can add it to your lens and then you can take filters and they'll just snap and stick right onto the front. So that's really awesome. I've already done that to these other lenses. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I have it on the very outside. They look like this. And then what you're able to do is add these rings to your filters. So here I have a uh, fader ND, and look at this, it just pops right on. Stays really um, secure. So now I've got this awesome fader ND. I can set that aside. Uh, another example would be a polarizer, pops right on, beautiful. Pop that off. Uh, let's say you're doing a shot where it's pretty precarious. You don't want to have your lens exposed. I don't have any UV filters on my lenses, um, but I do have one on one of these adapters. So if I'm going to do something where something's going to be, you know, possibly hitting the lens or, uh, you know, water spraying or something, you can just grab this guy, pop that right on. Now we have a protective filter on the front. And what's cool is even though it's a 77 millimeter thread, the outer diameter is 80 millimeters. So it's perfectly flush. This is still going to allow us to take our matte box and pop it right onto the lens. So that is really, really cool. I like that a lot. The final step is to get caps on these. Now, because this is a 77 millimeter thread, you still could stick a normal 77 on there, um, but I prefer to use these really nice caps that push on. So you'll see, just pops right on the front of your lens. You can label them. Uh, they're really, really nice. So there's a couple places you can purchase them. Cord Vision has them, but they've been out of stock for a long time. And I've talked to, um, you know, the owner over there, and it looks like they've lost their manufacturer for the material. So you know, if you can't get them there, you can purchase them at B&H. They're about twenty dollars a pop, though. You can also get them from Too Close, which is even more expensive. I have found through uh, Red User Forum these things, these caps are actually for binoculars uh, and for your telescopes and stuff. But you can get an 80 millimeter one, 
and it slides right onto your lens, which is really cool. Uh, the ones I got, they were a little loose, so what I did is I put a little bit of gaff tape on the inside, um, but that now is nice and snug, and uh, you can even, you know, obviously I don't recommend it, but you can pick the lens up by the cap, and that's the idea is you want something sturdy, but it'll still pop right on your lens. So that's gonna give you this beautiful, nice, uniform look to all your lenses, easily adding caps and removing them, but also protecting your lens. So that is a look at how to take your photo lenses and modify them for cinema use. There will be another video with de-clicking of these OM lenses, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have some suggestions. Um, but that is a great way to take these beautiful lenses and modify them to really use properly for cinema use.